I was an extremely shy person, extremely shy person. I was born on 455 Bevel Avenue, and our toilet was in the hallway, and 455 Bevel Avenue will be with me forever. We didn't have two nickels to rub together. Saturdays when we took our baths, the girls went first because they had to heat the water on the stove. The girls went first because they weren't as dirty as the boys. <laughs> Drag racing in the state of Massachusetts is totally illegal. We had so much drag racing going on on 140 and Charmin Avenue. You name it, there was drag racing. This program is brought to you by the Shamit Diner, a New Bedford institution since 1954. And by MenuJoy.com. We show restaurant menus. You browse, you decide. What is your full name? Joseph Jesus. Used to be a junior, but I just go by Joseph Jesus as of now. For many, many years, we lived on Page Street, opposite the hospital. We lived there for many years. I owned a Bristol building in downtown New Bedford. I had the peanut shop. When I retired, someone bought the building. Mark bought the building. We retired. And the house on Page Street was a, sort of a big house. It was 10, 11 rooms. So we retired, and we bought a place way up the north end on Maryland Street. And we lived there for a number of years. My wife passed away a year and a half ago. So it's, it's a very comfortable little cottage uh, for myself, a ranch, I should say. And it's myself and my two Persian cats. I owned a peanut shop for a good number of years. And before that, owning the Bristol building, we had a restaurant called Jonan's. Jonan's was on the second floor of the Bristol building on a corner Union and Purchase. Very, very elegant restaurant. It was all Victorian. My wife decorated it with Victorian furniture and marble tables. And we had 15 kids from SMU at the time, as singing waiters and waitresses. My hobbies have always been with automobiles. Um, I like models. I love, to, I love to go to the shows when they have the car shows, which I attend many, many of them and help with many of them. Um, I do the 50s night in downtown New Bedford, which last year we did approximately 400 cars. It's just an enjoyable type of hobby, and I enjoy doing fundraisers. I believe in giving forward, and, uh, and I enjoy doing it. Perfect happiness is when you can give. Give from your heart and uh, not expect anything in return. I get emotional now because I just... Give me a minute. Whew. I just lost my uh, wife and my daughter. This is tough. Which living person do you most admire? Well, it's tough for me right now because I lost my wife and my daughter within six months of one another. And I admire people that will stand up and do things because they're right. Not because of politics, not because they're looking for acknowledgement, not because they're looking for anything, but they do things because they're right. Um, there are many people that I admire that do things for that same reason. And you know, the, the greatest thing that I can think of is a person that will go out and do something just because it needs to be done. And, and that's character. And character is doing something good when nobody is looking, and not to expect anything in return. That's character. And there, there, fortunately, I would say I have a lot of friends that do that, and I'm happy to say that they are good friends. What is the trait you most deplore in yourself? Uh, I have a very tough time emotionally. This, this is probably one of the very, very, very few times that I get emotional. I hide my feelings extremely well and I wish I could just have an outlet that when I'm feeling down and out that I could let it out but I have never done that and uh, I'm doing it now and I'm really shocked that I'm doing it. Uh, I don't think it's a sign of weakness. I think uh, and I don't even think it's a sign of pride. I think it's just something that I wish I could get over, but 
hopefully someday I will. What is the trait you most deplore in others? I hate it when people think they're better than people. I've worked with a lot of people, and, and many people have helped people get ahead in their lives, and they forget where they came from. And there's nothing worse than seeing somebody that has climbed the ladder and then doesn't want to look back and doesn't want to give back. I was born on 455 Bevel Avenue, and our toilet was in the hallway, and 455 Bevel Avenue will be with me forever. We didn't have two nickels to rub together, but we had the greatest family and the greatest friends you could possibly imagine. And I feel very bad when I see people that get ahead in life and don't want to give back. Total shame. And actually, in one way, I feel bad for them because they have no way to go. And when they're looking for a friend, they're going to find it's going to be very, very cold when you have nobody to look back to. What do you dislike most about your appearance? <laughs> about my appearance? I, you know, I'm from the old school, Jim, and I love to dress. I mean, check my colors today, and if you check my colors yesterday, I just totally love to dress. Uh, my appearance, uh, because where we are today versus where we were 10, 15, 20, 40 years ago, I'm still from the old school. If I go to dinner, I'm going to dress accordingly. If I'm going to go out and about, I dress accordingly. Uh, do I dress down? Occasionally I will, if I'm going down to the beach or something like that. But uh, I, just, I just love to dress. <laughs> what is your greatest extravagance? Probably at one time my greatest extravagance was buying my first big house on <laughs> Page and Morland Terrace. It was something that we really, really enjoyed. And it was, um, it was within my means, but stretching. It was stretching. And uh, it was incredible because you look back now and you think from where you came to who you know to where you are. And I think when you look back, the things that you, you acquired really don't mean a whole lot. Don't mean a whole lot. I think what means a lot is the friends and family you have around you. That is, that is very, very important. What is your favorite journey? Well, Nancy and I, before we passed, we used to do, go up to New Hampshire a lot with the kids, up to Laconia. We'd go up to Laconia when the kids were small. And that, that was the best memories. When the kids grew up, Nancy and I, went, we did some traveling. We did Hawaii. Hawaii was extremely nice. But I think a place that's close by would be Aruba. And Nancy and I would do that. I think the only thing I regret is we never get to, got to go to Madeira Islands in Portugal with all the traveling that we did. And I hear so many of my friends telling me how great that island is. And we never had the chance to get there. What words or phrases do you most overuse? Do I most overuse? Well, I constantly tell people how great I think they are or what good they're doing. And I have no problem at all with phrases telling people just what I think of them. And 99% of the time it's always good because there are so many good people out there doing so many good things. And you know, when you wake up in the morning, if you're waking up with a very positive attitude, that's how your day is gonna go. If you wake up in the morning looking very negative at the day, that's how your day is gonna go, and guess what? Those are the people you're gonna run into, either negative or positive. And I like to stay on a positive end because everybody wants to hear the good of what they're doing, or you know, what you're doing, what they're doing. And the negative, negative just, uh, well, negative sells in the newspapers, but in real life, give us the best shot. Tell us what you did and be, be proud of what you did. And, and many people will tell you, close friends will tell you what they did. Most people won't brag about what they do. Which talent would you most like to have? Many, many, many years ago when I was young, I used to play the trumpet. And it was a lot of fun. And then I became a teenager and 
was not interested in, in trumpets anymore, was more interested with the guys going there and going there and doing different things. Um, I could have been a great singer today. I think the only thing that held me back was I can't sing. <laughs> I just don't have the voice. <laughs> Otherwise, in that, I would have been a great singer. <laughs> if you could change one thing about yourself, what would it be? Oh, I think, I, I think, again, it would be that I could express my inner feelings to, to my friends and to my family. Um, that is something that I've, unfortunately has been with me for all of my life. I can, exp you know, just get out there and laugh and joke with everybody and really be hurting on the inside, and I wish I could get that part out. If you were to die and come back as a person or a thing, what do you think it would be? Boy, that is a good question. If I come back, you know, I've had a little collie <laughs> that was the greatest little friend I ever had. And I've got two Persians, and they're the greatest. I, I think, you know, you're coming back as an animal, you're always giving. If you're a dog, you, you're to your master, regardless what kind of trouble you get in with your wife or your friends or how drunk you come home, your dog is right by your side. If you come back with a cat, they're on your lap, they're sitting there laying in bed with you nose to nose. I don't know, I think I would like to come back as an animal. What is the quality you most like in a man? I like a man that's very upfront that says it the way it is, and says what he means and means what he says. And somebody that will go out just because there's something to be accomplished, there's something to do, and just do it. And just walk away and be very glad that he did it. And the only person that has to know what he did was him and the guy upstairs. That's where I treasure a man or a woman that have those features. And I'll tell you, Jim, I met a lot of people like that. A lot of good people in the world. Some of them just are very bitter because of things that happened in their life. But deep down there's, there's some good, good people. I've been very fortunate to meet many of them. Many, many, many of them. And uh, I thank God for the friends and the family that I have and the things that I've accomplished. And not because of Joe Jesus, but because the people around me that helped me do the things that had to be done. Who is the greatest love of your life? And tell me about her. The greatest love of my life? Person, you mean? Well, it's three. My daughter's my wife. Tell me about your wife. Yeah. What would you like? Nancy was a perfectionist. I got to do the things that we did because of Nancy. I was an extremely shy person, extremely shy person. Up until I was about 28 years old, I started selling cars. And I started to come out of my shell just a little. And we never had two nickels to rub together. And the first car I sold, I made a $100 commission. I called Nancy up. <laughs> And told her, how did you do that? I sold the car in and I, you know, I just, and the guy just bought it and that was my commission. And then it went just from one thing to another. Uh, Nancy was the one that got me into dressing because I like to dress, but Nancy was a perfectionist. Everything had to be just so. And she'd get me into these pinks and purples and yellows and, 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 and she told me something and you know to this day she was right. She says, you know, Joe, appearance means everything. When you look sharp and you look like you're on top of your game, regardless of what you know about what you're doing, people will just think that you're the man for the job. And that was so true. I think when I sold cars at Ashley Ford for almost 20 years, I can count the time I came in second place. I was always a top salesman. And the reason being, my clothes was one of the main reasons. People would come in, hey, was that guy with the pink shirt? I know Jesus is a tough name to forget. 
But between that, and then I wanted to start a Mustang club. And, uh, you know, how do you, how do you do this? How do you do that? And Nancy would say, you pray about it. Come on, let's pray about it. And we'd pray about it. And lo and behold, if we wouldn't get an answer, or I'd meet the right person or the right guy, and this guy would bring that guy in, and before you know it, we had a Mustang club. Then it turned into a sports car club because it was so big and everybody wanted to join it. Then from a sports car club, we ended up with drag racing at the industrial park. Drag racing in the state of Massachusetts is totally illegal. I prayed so hard because we had so much drag racing going on on 140 and Charmin Avenue. You name it, there was drag racing. And lo and behold, George Rogers was the mayor. David Nelson was a counselor. Mike Marola was a counselor. And I talked to these two guys. And Pelletier was the chief, and he was a wild chief. He had a motorcycle and everything else. And lo and behold, if they don't grant me permission to have drag racing at the industrial park in 1970, <laughs> and we did. But the Industrial Park Foundation asked me if I would find another spot because of all the cans and cigarette butts and, you know, just everybody throwing everything out. And we did. We went to the North Terminal the following year. And basically, uh, uh, we had a little accident, nothing major, and I was really afraid that somebody would get hurt. So I gave up drag racing and went back to, uh, to just cars. And it was just totally incredible. And, uh, we bought a house. One of my friends was going to sell a house. And he asked me about getting into real estate. I knew nothing about real estate. I knew nothing about cars. But old Nancy, boy, she was right there. You can do it. You bump, bump, and on and on. And she would push me to, to every level you can possibly imagine. And, and I had so much love and confidence. I said, well, all right, man. We'll give it a whirl. And, and I put my heart and soul into everything. I didn't do it, you know. 50%. Uh, I put 100%. We bought one house and two houses and three houses. And, uh, and it just got to be, uh, I started buying foreclosed property and, and things just started selling for me. But one thing I never forgot, never ever forgot, 455 Bevel Avenue, where we lived. And, and when I keep saying that, there was four of us in my family, my brother and two sisters. And next door to me was a family of seven. And the toilet was in the hallway. <laughs> and I'll never forget that as long as we live. Saturdays when we took our baths, the girls went first because they had to heat the water on the stove. The girls went first because they weren't as dirty as the boys. <laughs> and then I did this with, with, the, with the seniors a couple of months ago, reminiscing what we did. And the girl was telling me about, she lived in Wareham, she had a hot house. And I said, well, we were very, Similar to that, only, you know, we're in a hallway. It was freezing in the wintertime. Never had to worry about anybody standing in that bathroom. And she said, well, what did you have for toilet paper, Joe? Well, we had a Spiegel catalog. <laughs> she says, oh, we had the newspaper. <laughs> and it's just how it She says, my father would cut squares of the newspaper and put them on a nail, and that's what we use. I said, well, we use the newspaper. But, you know, when you think of those days, that's just how it was. You thought everybody lived like this. And then as you grow older, you find out, well, not everybody did live like this. But the fun of it was, uh, I shouldn't say it was fun. It was a great experience in life. From, way, from where you were to where you are and where you're going. And I think the big thing in life today is knowing where you are and knowing how you got there. And not forgetting how you got there and where you're going. And as long as you're going forward, you give forward. And boy, I tell you, you will be blessed. And I've been so blessed uh, with Nancy, with my daughters, everybody just giving me that big push. How would you like to die? Uh, I would like to eliminate the suffering end of it. I think I would just like to be sleeping and just go right from there as peacefully as I possibly could. What is your motto? My motto is, <laughs> I have to say, and I'll repeat it again. Remember where you came from. Remember where you're going. Always be in a position to give. 
the more you give, the more you get. And my motto will always be, remember where you come from. Remember those that have helped you and remember those that are in need. So here we are at the Shawnet Diner. Uh, I definitely came here many times throughout my youth with my family. Um, then I went off to college and I wanted to tour the diner breakfast circuit. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a big creature of habit, I have to say. I always tend to get my classic uh, sandwich that has sausage, egg, and cheese on it. So did that at college. Then I graduated, came back home, and then I thought during that summer, hey, I'll, I'll come over to the Shawnet Diner, you know? And of course, I got my sandwich that I always get. All right, let's take a look at this. Look at all the goodness in there. Look, you got the egg, you got the sausage, and then you top it off with the cheese. Ah, oh, perfect. All right, here we go. Mmm. Oh yeah, that's it. Amazing, dude. You gotta come have this. Oh, it was terrific. Shaman Diner definitely had the best uh, sandwich of all, c compared to all those other places that I went to. Come on down here, you'll see what I mean. It's tops. Mm -hmm.